All right, I'm going to go ahead and get us started here. I want to welcome everyone to the virtual Miniscope workshop. Um, we are really excited to have, what is it, already 180 people online here today. And, um, you know, we've got uh, probably a, a bunch more coming in a few minutes. Um, so we're really excited to host this virtual Miniscope workshop for everyone. Um, I wanted to uh, first introduce myself. I'm Tristan Schumann. I'm an assistant professor at Mount Sinai in New York City. Um, and I want to introduce Daniel, who's going to help uh, with this introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm Daniel Acheroni. I am an assistant professor uh, in the Department of Neurology at UCLA. And um, I just want to start with, um, you know, introducing who the organizers here are. So, so we put together this workshop um, between, um, you know, Daniel Aroni, Denise Kai, myself, and Stephen Larson, who you're going to hear from in a minute, uh, who's the co-founder and CEO of MetaCell. Um, and unfortunately, Denise uh, is not going to join us today because she's having an ongoing medical issue, but we've got everything else covered, so we're going to cover everything uh, that, that she was going to do. Um, we also have an amazing group of uh, teaching assistants to help today. So we're going to have, um, you know, uh, we have eight people that are going to help uh, take you through um, every part of the Miniscope project um, from the surgeries all the way through data analysis. Um, and we have two whole days planned to, to train everyone how to do every piece of uh, Miniscope imaging. Um, and I'm gonna let Daniel take over from here. Yeah, so as, as Tristan said, the goal here is to give kind of everyone, all the participants a uh, foundation for, you know, you might already be using Miniscopes and to get a better understanding uh, of how the tools work, how to do surgeries and collect data and do data analysis in particular. Um, and then for all the, the, the new Miniscope users that are coming here to get a feel for what the tool's like and to, to our, our real goal is for someone to leave this workshop feeling like, yeah, I, I can do this. I can go, you know, get an assembly kit for a mini scope or try to build one for yourselves and feel like there is support in a community uh, to get you up and running. If you, even if you've never touched any optics or done surgeries or soldered a cable before. Um, and while we might not cover absolutely every single thing you would want to know to feel 100% confident that you can do this, uh, this will give a foundation, and then there's a bunch more resources online which we'll highlight. Uh, there's you know Google groups that there's a community of users that will um, answer and ask questions as well. So uh, really, we want everyone to leave here feeling like this is something that they can they can absolutely do. You go to the next slide, Tristan. Um, so I we all we really want to give a lot of credit to really where the Minisco project uh, began, which was when Tristan, Denise, and I were all postdocs um, at UCLA, and Piamon Golshani, Alcino Silva, and Baldi Pot talk had this idea um, to instead of kind of buying an off-the-shelf expensive commercial miniature microscope, you know, they thought, why don't we try to develop that in-house? Uh, they were all doing uh, research, as well as you know, Tristan and Denise were doing research that really could benefit from having a really usable miniature microscope. But we also knew that this type of technology would be transformative, not just to our research groups, but really to the to you know many more uh, neuroscience labs around the world. So really pushed forward uh, by Paymon Alcino and Ball was this idea that we should build something that works for us, but we don't want to just keep it in our own hands. We really want to design something that's fully open source, that's understandable, accessible, um, and really affordable for, for almost any lab in the world to, to get up and running and use. Uh, so really tons and tons of credit go to kind of this initial push forward by these three labs. I think I might have one more slide. Oh yeah, and so just to give a, a framework and we will also go over this in the first talk. We, the first miniature microscope we released, we call the version three now, which was released about five years ago. Um, since then, we have developed wire-free versions of this, which are also open source and available. We call the version three wire-free, which builds off the previous generation of miniature microscopes, but completely removes all the cabling and tethering. And then what we'll mainly focus on a lot of this workshop is the newest generation of miniature microscopes, which we call the version four. Uh, in you know, a few minutes, we'll compare the differences across these, these different versions of miniscopes. Um, and, uh, and also you know, talk about where the, this project is gonna go in the future. 
All right, so I'm gonna take you through a, a brief overview of the schedule that we're gonna have. So we planned, um, we typically have run these two day workshops in, in person, but you know we can't really do that on the scale, uh, particularly with COVID these days. So, um, so we tried to pack everything we typically put into a two day workshop into the two days that we have um, um, for today and tomorrow. And so we're gonna start with imaging principles. So Daniel's gonna go through you know, how the miniscope optics work um, and why we designed uh, the main scope the way that we did, um, in particular with this V4, with the new optics system, and, and to, to see why it was designed that way so you can understand how this thing works. And then um, myself and uh, Susie Feng from my lab are gonna go through how to do the surgery. So how do you implant a grin lens? How do you do face plating? Um, so you should, so you'll leave this knowing how to do all these surgeries uh, and you really should be able to implement it uh, in your own lab after this. Um, we're then gonna have a, a break, um, which is a lunch and a breakout room. So uh, we understand that you can't uh, be here all day long. So uh, you know during this time, it's a one hour block. Feel free to go get a lunch, come back. Um, we're gonna have different breakout rooms and I'll go over them in a second. Um, they're gonna have different topics that you can um, talk to people about. Uh, most of them will be moderated. Some will be unmoderated and you can just hang out. Um, and you know the, the topics are fairly loose. Just come say hi, introduce yourself. Um, we can answer any questions in that breakout session. Um, after that lunch period, we're gonna have an assembly and data acquisition from Daniel Aroni and, and Federico from his lab. Um, and then finally, the, the imaging and behavior session today, we'll, we'll talk about how to go about doing the imaging um, and considerations for how you'd actually run an experiment. Um, and then finally, we'll have another breakout session and, and you know, happy hour, feel free to um, have any beverage that you'd like um, and come and we'll just chat. Um, and we're gonna have an extra hour. We'll stay open um, for at least another hour um, and people will just come and hang out. So that's day one. Day two, we're gonna um, have um, a really exciting lineup. We're gonna have developer and user talks. And so we're, uh, we've invited six um, amazing speakers that have been using Miniscopes and developing Miniscopes um, and developing technology around uh, Miniscopes. And, and we're, gonna have, we're gonna hear the, the latest developments from that. Um, we're then gonna have another breakout session um, here from uh, uh, Phil Dong uh, and Denise Kai's lab about data analysis, and then uh, talk about future directions and some of the new uh, developments within the Miniscope community. Um, and then a subset of you will also be able to do a hands-on tutorial on day three. Um, so this is a hands-on tutorial um, looking at Minion uh, data analysis package. Because we wanted, this is the first time we've done this, we wanted to limit it to a very small um, number of people so that we could do uh, individual one-on-one -on -one help. We can't do that at the scale of the number of people that were registered. And so that's only gonna be for people who are confirmed to have this, uh, that were confirmed registered for this third day hands-on tutorial. Um, and just for housekeeping, um, based on the, the, the number of people that are in the Zoom call, we really have to limit the um, interactions and questions. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask everyone to put all of their questions into the chat. We'll have people monitoring the chat to answer any of those questions. Um, at the end of each talk, we'll have a Q&A period. You can either put questions directly into the chat, or if you want to speak directly, you can raise your hand um, and we will be able to unmute you. But most participants um, should not be able to unmute themselves. We will have to unmute you, unmute you for you um, or, or request that you unmute. And so in order, if you wanna speak, just raise your hand um, through Zoom and we will, uh, we will we'll put you through. Um, quick note on the breakout rooms. Uh, we have 11 breakout rooms um, divvied up by topic. Um, we'll post this again later and we'll post it in the chat as well. Um, but basically we're gonna have them moderated um, based on different um, topics or we'll have kind of hangout rooms if you wanna just discuss or, or meet other people, um, kind of do some networking. So we'll put this up again later. Um, and we're really excited for day two. Um, you know, the, we've, we've invited six just um, amazing speakers. Um, we'll, 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 we'll hear them talk tomorrow about ways that they've actually been using Miniscopes and, and developing new technology from data analysis to, to new optical systems. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and the last thing what I wanna say is that, you know, for one, all of these uh, lectures are gonna be recorded. Um, so they're going to be available. We're going to send a, an email blast after the workshop to tell everyone about how um, they can access those. Um, and we have lots of resources available for people to, um, if you miss something here, um, we have tons of resources. So we have the miniscope.org wiki, which was uh, based on the V3 version. 
We have a V4 wiki, uh, which is hosted by Daniel Aroni's lab. Uh, we have a Google group that um, can answer any questions. You can send emails to everyone. Um, and we have, so we have all these resources. Um, so, you know, you don't have to remember everything that you hear today. Um, we have this, um, so don't worry, there's gonna be a lot of information, uh, but you can always go back and find these resources. Um, so, um, you know, feel free to just relax, um, try, to, try to learn as much as you can, but it, um, you know, you will have these resources available later on. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Stephen Larson, who is the uh, CEO and co-founder of Metacell. And we first wanna just thank Metacell for hosting this workshop um, and you know, really providing a lot of the technical uh, background um, that's gonna allow uh, particularly the hands-on analysis um, to work. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Stephen now. Great, uh, thanks so much. Um, I'm standing between you and the first uh, talk, so I'll be quite brief. Um, first of all, I'm Stephen Larson. Um, I um, got my PhD in neuroscience from UCSD um, a bit more than 10 years ago. And while I was there, I became interested in all the things that were possible with open source technologies, both open source hardware and open source software. And so 10 years ago, I, with uh, partners, started uh, this company, Metacell, essentially from zip, <laughs> from the ground up, uh, just as an organization to try to be helpful to scientists, as a scientist, for scientists, recognizing that when it comes to working with uh, software, working with data, uh, there can be challenges that uh, really distract from getting research done in an effective way and really wanting to have an organization, build an organization that consists of scientists to help scientists but to do it in a way that's very compatible with the open source ethos that I was very much a fan of myself uh, when we started this. So um, over the last 10 years of being around, we basically um, we're, we're, we've stayed a small boutique organization that helps um, organizations all the way from large pharma companies down to small and individual labs, essentially doing custom work. This has been our basic, uh, our basic project to help uh, labs when they have challenges with data, especially when they're trying to hook data together and especially when they're trying to share data with each other, either to aggregate that data or to visualize it. Um, over the last 10 years, um, we've had the great benefit to work with all sorts of organizations, as I mentioned, um, and in particular, um, many major universities um, with challenges that you know, might confront organizations like yours. I think the last two years of the pandemic showed us all that when we're forced to not be physically together in the lab, that you know that creates the opportunity for doing a lot more on the internet than we ever could before. And we've been helping many organizations navigate that challenge. Um, as one example project of the dozens that we've done over the last bunch of years, uh, we've collaborated with the Virtual Flybrain Group to pull together anatomical uh, data from the Drosophila brain. This is a uh, consortia uh, consisting of University of Edinburgh, LMB Cambridge, and EBI, funded by the Wellcome Trust. Uh, this is something that's online now that you can check out, and it's one of many projects that we've uh, pulled together in the last several years. Um, we've recently um, announced uh, the ability to do cloud hosting. Now, there's lots of places on the internet that you can host your data, lots of places on the internet that you can host applications, and obviously universities are great places to host these things as well. Um, however, um, we've got a perspective on this from our experience to be able to help you out with that, whether it's uh, a mobile app that you might launch, whether it's a, a, a web application, or whether you just want to make sure that really quickly you get a group of people together collaborating around data that um, it might just uh, be faster to have an organization give you one-on-one -on -one support. Um, and the second thing is, so for the hands-on tutorial later on in the session, um, we'll be um, we'll be allowing folks to use Jupyter Notebooks that are running on our cloud in what we're calling Metacell Cloud Workspace. Um, this is really convenient because as I found as a graduate student working with open source code, sometimes there's like a few days of setup that you need to really get running. And Cloud Workspace is great because you just, in, in two minutes, you're up and running with everything that you need, plus all the compute that you could require on the back end. Um, so that's uh, an example of one of the things that we're doing to help help the community out. Um, uh, after the meeting, I just want to plug, we will be making available to all of you a Slack workspace to continue the conversation. This is going to be specifically focused on 
uh, data analysis that comes out of doing the imaging work that we're doing here. It's going to be uh, a conversation where everybody can engage and connect. Um, and then if there's a way that we can help, great. Otherwise, if it's a, just a better channel for you all to communicate with each other, also great. Um, uh, we'll be advertising that at the end because for now we want you all to be uh, happy and focused in this uh, in this conversation that we're going to have over the next couple of days. But stay tuned for uh, invites to that for everybody who's joined us uh, at the end. And okay, finally, um, as uh, Tristan mentioned, there's um, going to be a protocol of like raising your hand in Zoom. Um, uh, right after my talk here, I'm just going to post a link to a Google Doc for you that we prepared that just shows you all the icons uh, that you might not be familiar with uh, with Zoom uh, for all these features. Um, you can check it out uh, yourself uh, on your own time, but it'll hopefully help you navigate a couple of things that we're going to have, whether it's um, joining a breakout room, whether it's raising your hand, um, posting in the chat, not just to everybody, but maybe to somebody uh, specific. So it'll just help you navigate that and point you to some uh, also, some uh, frequently asked questions for the meeting in case you have them. It may cut down on the number of questions, but of course, um, if you have any challenges at all throughout this uh, meeting, please type them in the chat and we'll do our best to get back to you. Um, and that's all I have to say. Uh, with that, let me hand it back to Daniel to kick off the first lecture.